Lagos State, under the current executive governor, Mr. Babajide Somolu, has taken strategic and purposeful initiatives not only to drive his Themes Plus agenda, but a greater Lagos. Let's share with you recent official engagements and activities of Mr. Governor as he pilots Lagos on from the Governor's Office segment on the City of Lagos TV show. We'll be right back. First, from the governor's office. As part of his progressive development initiatives, the Lagos State Governor, Mr. Babajide Somolu, launched the Lagos Market Trader Money Initiative with 14,750 beneficiaries cutting across all the geopolitical zones in Lagos State. The launch, which had in attendance key cabinet members, executives from the State House of Assembly, traditional rulers, market leaders, associations, traders, and local government chairmen, was in fulfillment of a promise made during the commissioning of the Middle Market Agro Produce Initiative in Idioroko, Sunday, 17th of December, 2023. Governor Sawolu, in his speech, noted the significant value, relevance, and importance of the initiative to reaffirm the Themes Plus agenda of his administration. This initiative was conceptualized as a stopgap measure of state government to empower small scale traders in our food system by providing them the financial support to expand their businesses, thereby fostering economic growth and improving the lives of many within the state. This will ensure a sustainable livelihood and facilitate businesses for over 15,000 traders who occupy strategic positions in the state economic pyramid and for food distribution and network. Lagos State, which has a growing population and the population is growing every day, has a food system transaction value of over 6 trillion annually and in the process of establishing a dynamic food market system under the food system transformation agenda to promote the preservation, storage, transportation, and presentation of a wholesale food for the entire populace. With the aim of producing, reducing food wastage, improve affordability, guarantee food safety, quality, and accessibility, the initiative led to the implementation of key projects such as the establishment, the first of its kind in the whole of West Africa, a Lagos Central Food Security Systems and Logistics Hub at k 2 Rio. That project is about 60 to 70 percent, and we're happy that before the end of the year, we'll be completing the first food logistics hub in the whole of West Africa. We have also seen that we have launched the middle-level agro-produce at Idioro Mushi as a mark of our resolve to follow through the agenda. Work, therefore, has commenced at three additional middle-level markets. The one we did at Idioro, three other ones have started concurrently. We are doing one in Agege, we are doing one in Shongotedo, and we are doing one in Abuleado. Before the end of this year, by the grace of God, these additional three food hubs will be added to our central food systems and logistics hub. And we believe all of them will be commissioned before December 2024. Today's, today's event, which flag off the implementation of the Lagos market trader money, will support 15,000 markets with a sum of 50,000 Naira each. The beneficiaries were identified by our agreed field officers that served as enumerators in collaboration with all the Yalojas and the Babaojas in all of our markets around our total 57 LCDA and local government council. The beneficiaries were selected through a methodological process that is targeted at ensuring that 200 beneficiaries from the markets 
an additional 50 beneficiaries that were selected by the Yaloja and the Babaloja. We gave us a total of 14,750. The 750 balance were identified from markets within the, sorry, which gave a total of 14,250. The 750 balance beneficiary were identified from the markets within our barracks and our military formation. This is very strategic because we appreciate that the military and the various police barracks, we cannot enter them. So we selected you know, a number for them just so that we ensure that no one is left behind. To ensure fairness in the selection process while demonstrating the spirit of Lagos has been home to all Nigerians. We believe that all the beneficiaries cut across all the six geopolitical zones in the country. Of course, with the Southwest having a larger percentage, it, it comprises beneficiaries in Southwest, Southeast, South, South, Northwest, North Central, and Northeast. Of all the beneficiaries, I'm happy to say that 75% of them were women, 25% were men. And of course, 35% of the total beneficiaries are under the age of 40, whilst 65% are ages 40 and above. So you can see that we ensure that it cuts across the entire demography, age, sex, gender, and the rest of it. You know, so it is actually a program that has complete inclusiveness in the implementation. We believe that this gesture will go a long way to actualize the goal of transforming the food systems in the state and stimulate economic activity in our various food markets in line with the administration's Teams Plus developmental agenda. Still from the governor's office, the Lagos State Governor, Mr. Babajide Somolu, has charged all heads of parastatals and government-owned companies to ensure efficient and effective implementation of the state government's policies and programs in order for the administration to deliver the dividends of democracy to Lagosians. The governor who made this remark at the just held one day pally with heads of parastatals and government owned companies in Lagos emphasized their strategic role to state development, urging them to ensure accountability and transparency in actualizing their set objectives and mandate. It's imperative for you to know that as heads of agencies, parastatals, and government owned companies, you have a pivotal role to play in providing real leadership that will facilitate the delivery of dividends of democracy to our teeming population through efficient and effective implementation of government policies and programs. One of the key and very significant ways we can do this is to embrace innovation, creativity, and bolster government revenue to meet the ever-growing needs of our citizens. And I think Prof had put it also clearly that for us to meet that goal, we need to think out of the box. We need to have the right people, we need to look at our processes, and we need to enable technology to work for us. I think those are the three things Prof also put forward. So parastatal organizations are established with a mandate to address public specific developmental issues that hinder directly on the welfare and well-being of our people. Areas like waste management, water supply, housing and public transportation, it therefore means that the success of any administration will largely depend on how efficient and how effective such parastatals deliver on their mandates. How well can we run if someone like LRS does not perform? So you can see truly really that the agencies and all of you that are sitting in front here are critical and so strategic for all of us that are on this side for us to even be able to perform. And so in recent times, the global landmark landscape has presented us with unprecedented challenges, depending on what we adopt as clear, innovative approaches to be able to increase government revenue. As stewards of public resources, it is incumbent upon us to therefore explore new avenues and embrace cutting-edge solutions that will optimize our financial capability. By doing so, we can ensure that adequate funding are available in a timely and effective manner for us to be able to implement critical projects that, that would have direct benefits to our people. 
The parastatal monitoring office also engages with you as a critical mechanism at ensuring that we have clear adherence to establish protocols and standards. The collaboration, in my view, is the cornerstone of progress, and it is essential that we forge strong partnership across all sectors. Lagos State, under Governor Babajide Solu, recently presented retirement bond certificates to retirees in Lagos who have shown great commitment to the service of Lagosians and the state. Going down memory lane on the significant progress made so far in setting up a robust pension scheme for retirees through LASPEC over the years, the governor did not only express his joy to honor the retirees, but equally gave a progressive outstanding breakdown of total funds expended so far and the significant impressive numbers of retirees who have benefited. This ceremony holds a special place in my heart as it is a testament to our unwavering commitment to the welfare and to the well-being of retirees. At one point, I had been commissioner for establishment training and pension. I have seen firsthand the beginning of the pension reform way back in 2005. And I want to say to you publicly that Lagos State was one of the very first nationally to set up a pension commission, which is the last spec that we have now. I was privileged to set up the board at that time. And at that time, too, it was also difficult for us to migrate from the pay as you go, which was very cumbersome then, to the contributive pension that we now have. And I'm sure I'm standing in front of you as a fulfilled man, as a grateful man, that as your governor, I have seen that transition in my own personal life, and I'm indeed grateful to be here this morning to tell you that, yes, we've gone through a lot of ups and downs, but last week has come to stay, and I'm indeed happy with the leadership that we have at the pension, at the pension agency of Lagos State. I want to express, therefore, my profound gratitude to you, our retirees, who have dedicated your lives to the service of our dear state. Your dedication, your hard work, and your sacrifice had contributed immensely to the growth and the development of a great state of ours, Lagos State. Your commitment to duty over the years have, gone, have not gone unnoticed. And today, we're gathered to honor you and to express our deepest appreciation Today's event, therefore, is a continued affirmation of our commitment as a government to the welfare of its entire workforce, both active and post-service. The Lagos State government, since the inception of the contributory pension that I just told you, I started under the leadership of Ashura Jubala Ahmed Tinubu, who is our president now. Um, we're indeed very grateful that as we move from that government, our brother, my bon, BRF also further strengthen it. You know, um, Baba Tuni Raji Fashola continued very well, and Governor Akio Miambode also left no stone unturned. That to date, we have given almost 140 billion, 138 billion in total contributory pension that we have given out to almost 35,000 retirees. But for our own administration, which is less than five years, we have given almost 60 billion, 56.5 billion, to over 16,000 retirees, which includes retirees from Subeb, from Tescom, and from the local government. So this shows that indeed, we have done almost more than half of what my predecessors have done, and we will continue even to do more. And therefore, I'm excited today that today we're handing over to over 1,000 retirees, 3,149,658,599.34. This is alongside their monthly contribution, which have already been remitted to their respective retirement savings account with the PFAs. Distinguished retirees, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to mark the significant moment. As of today, my administration has covered well over half 
of the total contributory pension that we have seen in Lagos. While we acknowledge the backlog of payments, I have a good news for you here today. I am pleased to announce that we have made significant progress and that we are almost at the end at ensuring that once you retire, you will have your paycheck the very next month. As part of his progressive development initiatives, the Lagos State Governor, Mr. Babajide Sonwulu, has called for strategic collaboration and partnership between the state government and the local government with respect to addressing all parking and traffic issues in the city of Lagos. The governor who made his call at the Lagos State Parking Authority LASPA Stakeholders Forum 2024 with the theme assessing the social and economic impact of the industry identified indiscriminate parking as one of the major challenges that hinder free flow of traffic and vehicular movement in Lagos. The governor did not only outline the key responsibilities of LASPA in his presentation, but also emphasized the strategic relevance of the stakeholders' engagement to achieve a seamless parking and traffic management in Lagos. LASPA has been saddled with the responsibility of regulating all forms of parking, adopting innovative, adaptable, and sustainable operational system and technology, which also lays the foundation for a lasting change in parking culture across the state. Lagos has 10 times more vehicular density than any part of the, of the, of the country, has 10 times traffic issues than any part of the country. We need to be nimble, we need to be creative, we need to be able to come up with a policy that both of us will see both the public users and government can come together and engage and have a solution. And that's really why we're putting this together. We're intentional and unrelenting in our efforts to address all traffic issues in our state. And we have identified indiscriminate parking as one of the major challenges that hinders free flow of traffic and vehicular movement in our state. We have adopted a model that ensures a win-win situation between the state and the local government. The state have also shown that we can collaborate with our local government. And I think they need to give themselves a round of applause. It is not a case of who wins what. It is for us to have a joint solution in the state to be able to resolve whatever the hiccups that we have. We know that there are some constitutional responses that give some of those authority to the local government. But we realize that because Lagos is a city state, is a cosmopolitan city-state. You probably even find it difficult to know when you have moved from one local government to another. It is seamless. So what we're trying to do is that instead of having 57 you know, agencies running over you here and there, why can't we collaborate? Why can't we have one system that works? And we're happy that our local government have worked with us. And this kind of collaboration is not the first time we're doing it. We've done it in Lhasa, which is a Lagos State signage agency which shows that you know, when government works together at all tiers, we can create a win-win, we can resolve issues, but the citizens will be the major beneficiaries of such engagement. And finally, from the Governor's Office segment on the City of Lagos TV show, Governor Babajide Somolu received in audience the United Kingdom Secretary of State for Business and Trade, Kemi Badenoch, and a team on a courtesy visit at his marina office. The British envoy noted her visit is to strengthen international business relationship between British investors in Lagos and the Lagos state government. The first meeting that I had was a British business roundtable, which is businesses from the UK that are investing in Nigeria, mainly in Lagos uh, as well. And they told me what it was like uh, working here and wanted me to tell you uh, how excited they are about investing uh, in the country in Lagos and also some of the challenges which they've been experiencing and uh, we want to make sure that we have the, the two-way trade so British uh, businesses in Nigeria and the investment but also the exports I'm also the, the Secretary of State that covers exports we know the challenges that uh, Nigeria is having with foreign exchange one of the ways that you can resolve that is exporting more and finding out what we can do on the UK side to reduce those barriers 
to trade and ensure their business between the two countries. On his part, the governor who reiterated the various developmental initiatives of the government promised to sustain an investment and business-friendly environment for British investors to thrive. The conversation really um, for us is about you know, creating that opportunity for businesses to drive for the very youthful, dynamic, young population that we have, you know, be able to express themselves, be able to, you know, um, activate their engagement with other young leaders in the world. And I know that the UK is doing a lot in that, you know, in culture, you know, arts, you know, entertainment, tourism, you know, these are areas where Lagos continue to play an important role. And on infrastructure, we continue, I mean, Helen was with us, I mean, a year and a half ago, two years ago, where we continue to push the verticals around making the place, you know, a lot more livable, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and being very resilient that it can compete, you know, with other big cities of the size, you know, given the regular challenges of traffic management, you know, pollution, environmental issues, and the rest of it. We we'll continue to push on that. We've been having conversations on waste conversion and the rest of it. And if I remember very well, about a couple of years, when the Prime Minister had mentioned that they wanted to, you know, advance that conversation with her. I don't know if you've met the lady, you know, um, she's a Nigerian, but she's got very deep British, you know, um, yeah, they are British um, investors, you know, and we've been waiting, you know, and this is some of the conversations that we also want to have you know, a Lagos that is, a, is an energy transition, but we can speak, you know, around ensuring that, you know, uh, climate change, you know, conversation mm -hmm. is real, greenhouse gas emissions and, and, and the rest of it, you know. And so coming out of COP28, we've said to ourselves that, you know, we can leapfrog, you know, have access to, you know, um, funding, you know, but more, more importantly, be able to create, you know, an ecosystem where Lagos can compete you know, in any of those, you know, new verticals with any big city in the world. Uh, Nigeria has its own challenges, like you're saying, you know, I mean, I'm a local, you know, uh, but we continue to help and push, you know, our country in a way and manner where, you know, all other parts of the country can also grow and develop, mm -hmm. you know, in a very systematic order. Now, part of the things we've been saying is let's consume what we grow. Let's grow what we consume. You know, so that we can reduce our dependence, you know, on on foreign currency, you know, mix. But that also is not to shut ourselves on, you know, and not being able to, you know, move away from a mono product, which has been oil that we've been relying on, and diversify, have other, you know, um, import, you know, export related products that can enhance and increase and reduce, you know, the pressure that we currently have, you know, in our country. Um, so, but for us in Lagos, we'll continue to make this environment, you know, um, investment, you know, business friendly, continue to make it, you know, um, a destination of choice, you know, understanding that people have choices. People can indeed make those, you know, um, investment decisions, but make Lagos, you know, one of a reference point, not only in West Africa, but in the whole of Sub-Saharan Africa. That's the update from the Governor's Office segment on the City of Lagos TV show. Thanks for watching.